gentrification, I simply ran out of time to make um, slides for you. So this is the only slide I have right now. I can certainly talk to you about uh, the topic and the simulation. I've also completed the simulation. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, so probably the hardest part of this would be the nitrogen cycle. So become familiar with the nitrogen cycle. Uh, maybe I can actually draw a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. So in the atmosphere, we have a lot of nitrogen, right? Um, and you may already remember this from other classes or even the beginning of this class. The atmosphere is about 78% nitrogen and it's in the form of N2. Uh, N2 has three bonds connecting them together, three bonds. So you, you've seen double bonds and they're strong. A uh, triple bond, uh, not very common um, in nature, I suppose. Um, but that's the nitrogen in the air. So um, you could also label this gas, just to remind yourself that this N2 is gas and this triple bond, this makes it very stable. So not only are bonds, you know, a triple bond is hard to break because you have to have enough energy to break every single one of those individual, you know, three bonds. But this is also what we would call like inert, um, Sorry, it's hard to write with my mouse. Um, but N2 is, is a stable or inert, um, or another way to say that would be non-reactive. I should have just let you take those notes instead of writing them down. This is very sloppy. But it's a non-reactive, reactive, I forgot what I was writing, non-reactive molecule, okay? Now, we can't use this. Uh, very, very few organisms in the in the entire Earth are able to take into gas and utilize it. So it's very special when you have nitrogen fixers or fixation. Nitrogen fixation. Fixation. And nitrogen fixation takes into gas and produces NH3, which is ammonia. Ammon, ammonia. Okay, don't confuse that with ammonium. Ammonium is NH4 plus. Okay, so it's the ion, uh, one of the ions that can be formed from ammonia. Okay, so this is ammonium, ends with the um, okay, uh, and this is ammonia. Okay, now ammonia is good. We can use that. A lot of organisms can use ammonia. Um, plants have to have ammonia and plants cannot do this process of fixation. So fixation is by a few specialized organisms like bacteria and fungi. Okay, um, and so that's taking the gas out of the air and metabolizing it and releasing ammonia. So that's fixation. You will see in the simulation that we have um, other parts of, um, of the cycle, um, the nitrogen cycle um, include ammonia fixation, ammonium Ammoni, ammoniafication, yeah, so it's a weird word. Um, and maybe I can, oh, what did I do? Hold on. I'm gonna pull up another slide real fast and just type this for you. So ammoniafication, this is, um, this is when uh, decomposing microbes like bacteria and fungi 
are able to break down organic material. So like dead plants and animals. Example, um, and they're able to break that down and release ammonia, NH3, okay? Um, but that's not the same as the nitrogen fixation, which are microbes that take into gas and make ammonia in H3. So this is, though it seems the same because you're getting ammonia as the product, they're not actually the same. Um, and we need both of these to be able to occur. These decomposing microbes will also help replenish carbon and other things as well. But right now we're just thinking about the nitrogen cycle. So we're not talking about all the other components. Um, then you also have um, ammonium, which I was mentioning is uh, NH4 plus. And um, that can be um, certain microbes um, can convert ammonium to nitrite and nitrate. So you also need to know that nitrite is in, mm, sorry, thirsty, in O2 plus. And then you would need to know that nitrate is the bigger one. It's in O3 minus, these should be minus, okay? Um, and so this is all in the simulation. You're gonna see this. Sometimes it's, um, again, it's helpful to have a little introduction, know what's coming, have time to start processing it. Then when you do it in the simulation, it'll all make sense. Okay, so that's the nitrogen cycle. Why are we talking about the nitrogen cycle though? You're probably wondering. Well, it turns out that water should not have very much nitrogen at all. And when too much nitrogen gets into the water, it can allow the plants of the water, essentially, they're not, they're algae, okay? They're not actually plants, a different hierarchy, right? But um, I like to think of algae as kind of like water aquatic plants okay um and so you can have algae that normally are in small amounts because they're limited in the amount of nutrients that's available to them but if uh runoff water from fertilizers for example gets into the water now you have a high amount of that nutrients then the algae can what we call an algal bloom and algal bloom is just a massive amount of algae. In fact, so much algae that you can see it completely transform the appearance of the water. Um, it can become brown, it can become red, sometimes other colors, um, and you'll see some of that in the simulation as well. So the, the biggest cause of this is from fertilizers, but it can happen from other um, like industrial applications and, and such. And it doesn't have to be just runoff water that goes from the surface to a drain to the ocean or lake. Um, it can also be, um, it can leach down into the ground and get down way into the, to the groundwater called the, um, the water table or the water bed, or even uh, sometimes referred to as watershed, okay? So sorry for the, all the terminology, but that's how in environmental sciences. Okay, so uh, so it can e either go straight down, all the way down through the ground and get to the water that way, or it can run off the top and get into the water that way. Um, when the algae become very numerous, 
initially you're going to get a lot of oxygen in the water because algae perform photosynthesis and the outcome of photosynthesis or waste product of photosynthesis is oxygen. But what happens is that uh, as algae are eventually going to die and they're going to sink to the bottom of the sea if it's if it's or the lake if it's a lake and when the dead algae sink to the bottom then you're going to get a huge amount of bacteria um, decomposing bacteria to start eating that dead organic matter and that the, all those bacteria are going to grow to large numbers to eat all the algae and they're going to use up all the oxygen. And so this leads to hypoxia. And so I want to highlight that. Hypoxia specifically means very little oxygen. And so let's go ahead and put in parentheses less than two parts per million. So very, very little oxygen. Okay, anoxia means no oxygen left in the water. And so when you get to um, hypoxic levels, uh, hypoxic uh, depletion levels, then it creates these uh, dead zones, right? There's not enough oxygen to support the life that's there and things start dying. Okay, so that actually goes up here. So first you get the bloom, right? The first part is you have all this extra nutrients, the algae use up that nutrients and they release a bunch of oxygen, but then eventually the algae die and they sink to the bottom. And then you get the uh, decomposing, decomposing bacteria to eat the algae. Uh, and they will use up the oxygen. And I, of course, spelled algae wrong. Okay, I am, and so the decomposing bacteria are going to use up all the oxygen as they eat the dead algae. And that will lead to hypoxia or can, if it's, if it is enough, um, if there was enough dead algae to lead to that um, depletion of oxygen. So there will be a depletion of oxygen if it becomes uh, severe enough to be um, the oxygen to be less than two parts per million, then it's hypoxia. If it gets even worse than that um, to where there's essentially no oxygen left, then it would be anoxia. But hypoxia is enough of a depletion to kill off the life in that aquatic ecosystem. So fish and other, uh, other organisms. Okay, so that's what a dead zone is. Um, so let me go ahead and look over real quick what you do in the simulation. And, and then I'll open up to whatever questions you have. So in this lobster, uh, you're going to help a fish farm determine why uh, millions of fish died. And also, not only did you have a, bat, a large amount of fish that died, but a lot of the fish had ulcers, like an open sore um, on their body. And so you're going to help determine what caused the ulcer. And then um, uh, you're going to take a fish sample, you're going to take some water samples, and then you're going to look at them under the microscope, and then you're going to perform a test also to see what the uh, nutrients uh, in the water is, and just kind of look at different factors to, to tease out what the cause 
of the different issues that the fish farm is having. Um, and so I already went over eutrophication, which is the sudden and dramatic change in nutrients um, and can, how that can lead to an agile bloom. And then that can lead to uh, depletion of oxygen by the bacteria that eat the dead algae. Um, there's also a, a, a particular organism uh, that they will talk about, make sure you know that. Um, that particular organism is not usually um, toxic in and of itself, but it can produce a toxin um, under environmental shift or a stressor. Um, and that toxin is incredibly toxic. Um, and so you'll learn about that. And you'll learn about um, really just this little method to, to test for the amount of, of nitrogen in the water sample. Um, you add a reagent, the reagent will react with nitrogen. The more nitrogen in the water sample, the more intense the color becomes. And so you'll just use a spectrophotometer um, to measure the difference in, um, uh, in color intensity. And then you can see which samples had the highest levels. And so these samples you're taking um, are from different um, streams and different regions um, to see was it, uh, was it the cow farmer that um, put too much nitrogen into the water? Was it a cotton farm? Was it a, um, I didn't write down what the other thing is, cocos, um, some other plant uh, farm, uh, something or rather. Sorry, I didn't write that, that detail down, but you're going to test a few different samples of water to see which one led to the al algal bloom. Um, and that's it. So that one will be pretty simple. Um, I will, I'll put another slide or two together just to help uh, clarify uh, what things to focus on. But I think this is a, a great um, start. You have everything you need to go ahead and just run through those simulations. But 